somebody needs more paint, and just pop it in front of them. Yeah. Okay. Especially like those young, those young kids. They'll probably. Hey, you guys. How's everyone doing tonight? That was so lame. Uh, Autumn, can you get that window for me? Who is here for the first time? Anybody? I know we have some at this table. This little group, your first time. Got some friends here. Well, welcome. Do me a favor, if you can, scoot in a little bit, especially if you're in my aisles. I don't want you to be uncomfortable, so you don't have to scooch in until you can't, like, paint. But just enough so my cute helper, Autumn, can get to you if she needs to get you paint. Okay? My name is Miss Cammie. I will be teaching this awesome scene today. Doesn't this just remind you of Utah? It does me. And I was driving on Main Street here to the studio and all the flags up. And by the way, the parade's Saturday, right? These, these people are, but the parade is Saturday morning, right? These people are crazy. They're already set up. What's on Thursday? Oh my gosh, you Lehigh people are just party all month long. <laughs> this guy is like, all right. Um, anyway, so super fun piece. I'm excited to paint it with you. Remember, you're here for the experience, not to become the next Picasso, if that's your goal. I don't know if this place is for you, but we're here for fun, okay? So just don't put the pressure on yourself. Have a good time. If you have questions, holler up to me. I love to chat with you. Like I said, my name's Cammie. Autumn's on the floor. This is cute little Autumn over here. She is mostly here to help you get what you need. So if you need paint, let me turn my um, awesome American music down. Um, if you need paint, raise your hand. She'll get it for you. That's easier than you trying to get it. If you have a drip on your canvas, raise your hand. She knows the tricks. Okay, she's here for those kind of things, so just holler out to her. Um, this is a two-hour class, so I will paint at the speed of a two-hour class. That <laughs> He's like, that's great. So um, if you fall behind, that's normal. If you're ahead of me, that's normal, okay, because we're all going to paint at different paces. So don't feel like you're doing something wrong. Everybody will leave with a finished piece, I promise, okay? Most likely, you'll think I'm going too fast, except for this group of boys right here. They're gonna be like, too slow, too slow, let's go, let's go, okay? Um, I just would suggest you don't jump ahead of me, because you might miss something important. We do this in steps so that it dries in certain steps as we go. So, just a little heads up. Any questions, comments, concerns, okay? We are live tonight. So you can go home and rewatch, but don't worry, you're not live. You're not live. I am live, okay? <laughs> She's like, am I in the line of I? <laughs> no, no one's gonna see your painting, just mine, really up close and personal, it's no pressure, okay? So we just wanna welcome anybody that's watching us at home. You have two jars of water, try and keep one clean. That way when you need to dilute your paint, which you will have to many times, Use your clean water, not your dirty water, okay? You guys ready? As you can see, we have sketched in roughly your image for you, okay? Um, if you paint too thick over that, you're gonna lose your image and freehand, okay? Which I'm cool with if you are. But if you want to keep your image, follow how I go over it or lightly into it so that you don't lose it completely because trust me, a freehand waving flag is just not for everybody. Okay, do you have a big flat at your station? Okay, we want to get it wet. Let's go ahead and just kind of swish it around in some water. Loosen up the bristles. You can tap it. You can wipe the extra off, whatever you want to do. Here's our plate of fun colors. Switch them up if you want to. If you have some inspiration and you need another color for that inspiration, raise your hand, okay? Uh, Miss Autumn will get it for you. So the first section of our sky is super light. See how light that is? Very, very light, okay? So what we're gonna do is just get the teeniest bit of blue and mix it with white. Did you see how little of blue I got? Like barely, barely any blue, okay? Very, very light. 
it's probably coming off on the screen almost white, but just, just a touch of blue, especially because we're going from cool to warm colors and they mud together. You don't want to go very dark, okay? So super, super light. So we've got that. And then we're going to start at the top of our canvas and we're going to go just a couple of inches with this light blue before we want to go right into just white paint. Okay? So we're going to go blue for a little bit and then we're just going to white before we hit yellow. That way we don't have a green sky. We are not in the mood for tornado season here. Now when I come to my flag, I'm going to lighten my brush strokes and brush into it a little bit, but not all the way okay so it's okay if you get some in your flag but you don't want to cover it up and you can see I've got some darker streaks kind of coming off my brush as I go which is totally normal okay and you kind of that kind of gives a better sky feel to it Okay, so we're just going to come down. Now, I'm kind of a stickler for wrapping my canvas because I really like that completed look on my canvas. Um, so that just means wrap your edges. So the top of your canvas is all going to be blue. And then you're just going to paint blue just a couple inches down on either side. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to go straight into just white paint. I'm going to wipe the blue off on my paper towel. I'm not going to wash it. And I'm going to go into white paint, and I'm going to start to blend this lighter section. And I'm doing this kind of quickly because paint can only blend, acrylic paint can only blend wet into wet. Okay? So if I let this dry before I start blending, I'm not going to get a blend. Okay? So now we're going to blend in this really light section. You have about an inch of your canvas that's just, looks like it's just white. It's got barely a hint of blue in it before we start our yellow. And that's really important to have that section. Otherwise, you will get a green sky. So I have my blue and then it lightens, lightens for about an inch across the canvas, okay? So that's what I'm working on right now, is just blending in that light. And what I do is I brush into the blue and down to the white so that I don't have stripes. We want to try and avoid stripes. Okay, unfortunately, that happens when we are painting and trying to blend and just learning. Okay. So just make sure that top of your flag, you go all the way to that line. This is a waving flag, okay? So make sure your sky is filled in right there. Don't assume that that goes just straight across. That little indent is part of that waving flag. So make sure you get that, okay? Okay, so we've got blue, light blue into white right? We've got a section of white. And then we're going to wash our brush. Okay, I'm moving. I'm rolling. I know this is intense. Again, we have to move quickly when we're blending a sky, so that's why I'm moving quite fast, okay? A couple of tips. If you're seeing little white pockets on your canvas and you're not able to just brush across and it fills in those pockets, it's one of two problems. Either you don't have enough paint on your brush or your paint is too thick, okay? Your paint should be the consistency of melted ice cream all the time. It doesn't come out of the bottle that way, so you always have to add water, okay? Just keep that in mind. Your paint always needs water. All right, I'm gonna give my brush a good wash so that I don't have tornado sky. I'm from the south, so. We don't want that. You know that green sky means tornadoes are coming. All right, here we go. We're going to keep going, and we're going to go light yellow, and then we're going to blend that into light orange, 
And then we're going to have a nice, our brightest orange will be kind of on our mountain tops. Okay? But I add white to that still. It's still not the shade of orange on your plate, as you can see. Okay? So I'm going to make a light yellow, get a touch of yellow, and mix it with some white. And I'm going to start pretty light. And this yellow, I want to mix into that white portion of my sky. Now, with your birds, because we're using yellow and orange, you should be able to brush right through them and still see them because those colors are pretty shy. Because it's really tricky to paint around those birds. But, you know, we don't, we don't really want to freehand all the birds. There's a couple we have to, but I don't want to freehand all. So you see, now you can see that white section, right? That happens before I go into that yellow, okay? That's saving me from having a green sky, that separation. Now you can still pull some of that yellow into your blue gently and not have green happen. Just be really careful um, so that you don't get too much of that, especially if you have a thick blue sky. And again, I'm painting, I'm still painting uh, with a horizontal brush stroke, but I'm not going all the way through my flag. I still want to keep those lines, but I'm not painting a square. I'm not going vertical, horizontal. My strokes are always horizontal, okay? That way I can still have that sky fill to it, okay? That horizon line there. Okay, as you go down, you can kind of darken that yellow a little bit. Put a little more yellow and less white on your brush before we start into our awesome orange. As you can see, I've gone over my birds and I can still see them. So just do it lightly and you should be able to still see those fun birds. And if you lose a bird completely, we can give you some chalk to kind of help you find it again. But we just want to do our best. And just so you know, the yellow on my screen is going to pop a lot more than my original because of the lights and the cameras. So if you're looking at this yellow and you're going, wow, that's really, really bright, um, brighter than yours, it, it probably isn't if you looked up on the actual canvas. All right, I'm not going to wash my brush as I go into orange because I want some of that yellow on my brush. So I'm just going to, see, I just kind of bring a little bit of orange over to my pile of light yellow. And I'll start the blending of that now. Trying to catch that before we have too much drying happening. Blend into the yellow and out of the yellow. So we can get that awesome sunrise that's happening in the morning here. I hope you guys can appreciate my um, very patriotic playlist here. <laughs> I'm trying. Pulling out all the stops here. All right. So as we come down, you'll notice that I constantly go up into my other colors. That's why I get that ombre and I don't have the stripe effect happening on my canvas. And like I said, as you get close to your uh, mountains, that's when you can really have fun with that orange and put your dark 
dark orange at the top of those. I'm starting to lose a little bit of my bird, but I can still see it enough for me. And that might happen to you. You might kind of lose some of it, but not all of it. We don't want to lose all of it. When you come down to your mountains, it's okay to get into those mountains with your orange. You don't want to get too much because our next step is the mountains, so you don't want to be fighting that orange paint as you fill in your mountains, but it's okay if you cross that line a little bit. Don't forget, you're wrapping your edges as you go so that you don't have to go back to those colors and re um, paint the edges of your canvas. Unless you're just like, you know what, I don't really care about my edges, that's okay. It's your painting. We're not all OCD like I am, and I can appreciate that. Don't forget to use your water. With every color, you're going to need your water. Don't just assume that your paint is ready for your canvas. Always utilize your water. And don't be afraid to load your brush generously with paint so that it fills in those spots, OK? Nice blends, bud. Pretty. Another tip, too, is try and, and take your brush from one corner of your canvas to the next without picking it up. Every time you pick up your brush, it ends a stroke. And when you end a stroke on your canvas, it almost leaves a little impression on there that you can see. So try, try to lift it if you, or not lift it if you can. Nice blends, girls. These are beautiful. If you guys get cold, let me know. This is blowing right on you. Are you okay? Are you good? Your back is getting cold. <laughs> okay, well, if it gets too unbearable, let me know. You won't have any details. You have to get details out of there. All right, when your sky is in, you can wash your brush. Um, another tip I want to give you is to know when to stop. Um, and I say that with all the kindness in my heart, okay? Um, no, honestly, if you paint over a spot too many times, you will lift the paint instead of lay it down. So you might be thinking, oh, if I put more paint right here, it's going to cover this up and I'm going to like it better. You're going to actually lift the paint because acrylic paint becomes sticky when it dries and it dries fast. And once it's sticky, you start to almost have that effect with your brush where you're pulling the sticky paint off. Okay. Also, we like to remind our adults 60% is our goal. We're going for 60% satisfaction, okay? So once you're at 60%, it's time to move on to the next step. And remember, this is step one of a lot of steps. So at the end, you're going to look at your picture as a whole. Right now, all you're seeing is the sky, okay? All right, I am washing my brush. I'm going to give everybody another minute, and then we're going to move on, okay? So if you feel like you're finished, maybe check your edges. If you decided you didn't want to do them, fine. If you want to do them, 
and you forgot a color, maybe this is a good time to go back and fill that in, okay? I'm impressed with all the blends you guys have done awesome. Make sure your brush is really clean between steps, especially when working with cool and warm tones. They mud out, okay? So you'll just create brown if you're not really washing your brush. All right, so let's talk about our mountains. They're going to be a dark blue, okay? Um, but you don't want them this dark blue, the shade on your plate. You want to lighten it for the sake of filling in space, and also this is very strong. So I'm going to take, let's see, yeah, my whole pile of blue, and I'm going to add white and get my mountain color. This is also going to be the color of the blue in your flag, okay? You don't want to go too light, but keep in mind it dries um, at least a shade darker on your canvas than what you see on your plate, okay? So I always like to go a touch lighter on my plate because I know it'll uh, darken up on my canvas, okay? So once we have a good mountain color and everybody's going to have a different one different shade because we're all mixing our own color go ahead and paint from your mountain tops all the way down your canvas to the very bottom paint the edges if you're wrapping but you don't have to paint the bottom of your canvas why because it's grass it's going to be green okay but do paint the edges if that's what you're doing here we go and this is just a fun part because you know we're just we're just filling in space here. Those little lines on your mountains that Miss Emma worked so hard to get in don't matter at all. Bless her heart. I tell her every time you're going to lose those lines, and that's okay because I'm going to help you find them again, and it'll be fine. And you can go up and you can clean that mountain top you've gotten any orange in it. We're going to come through with another layer on this mount on these mountains too. Because we're using such a dark color, a lot of times we see those brush strokes more. So if you're if you see those and they're frustrating you, don't try and put the paint on thicker to get rid of them. Um just put a layer on there and know that we're coming back to them, okay? You can even change the shape of your mountains if you feel like it. You don't have to follow these lines exactly. So again, once you have that filled in, you can go up to your flag and you can fill in the blue square where your stars will be. I'm going to use my big brush still, but if that's super intimidating to you, you can switch to your smaller uh, flat. It's got a red handle.
Feel free to flip your canvas around so you can reach your flag better. You don't have to keep it upright the whole time. I do because I'm working around this camera equipment. You can flip yours upside down. You can flip it on its side. You can hold it on your lap, okay? Make the canvas work for you. Don't work for your canvas. I normally never paint like this, to be honest. I'm always moving my canvas. And just keep filling that in. Again, if you need to switch to a smaller brush to get that square into your flag, you can totally do that. You don't have to use the big one like I did, okay? That smaller flat brush at your station has a red handle, and that's a great one to use. It'll help you feel a little bit more in control, but still has that flat edge, so you can still get a square effect from it. Once you have your mountain in and that blue square, you can wash your brush. Look good, boys. If you're more comfortable, you can switch to a smaller brush, okay? Okay, if you've got your mountains in and your little square, you can wash your brush. Just um, check those edges. Again, if you are wrapping your canvas, do it as you go. It's a lot easier than trying to go back and match the color and wrap it then, okay? Okay, so for my um, stripes in my flag, I'm going to use this um, red handle brush. Okay, it's got a little squared off tip that's going to help us. And we're just going to paint in all of our red stripes. And then we'll go back and 
put another layer on our red stripes in the same order we put the first layer in because it'll be ready for that second one. And then you can do your white ones if you feel like they need it. Your canvas is white. If your stripes are still clean and crisp and white, you won't need to. I'm not going to add any white to my red. I do need to wet my brush, though, so make sure you get the clean water on it. And it starts with red and it ends with red. Okay. So this is just that kind of tedious step that we have to do here. And again, you can totally take your canvas down, lay it on your lap or something <clears throat> as you try and get these sections. You may also notice as you go, like some of your stripes might be a little wonky and you might have to straighten them out a little bit. That just happens as we transfer these images. Um, but also keep in mind, it's a waving flag, okay? So it's gonna, you're gonna have some squiggly lines. Let me show you on this side, under the blue square, is a white stripe, okay? So keep that in mind. This uh, this is going to be wet, white, and then red, white, red. Okay, so that's how it's going to go under that blue square. So this isn't going to start with red, and but it is going to end if that makes sense right here, okay? You might even find that you can't get the cleanest edge that you want with this brush, so you might just fill in with this brush and then grab your detail brush and crisp up your edges. That's okay too. Just try and fill in spaces with a larger brush like this one before you use your detail. It will really help you not have streaks. You might notice that the first couple stripes in the center wave a little bit and then they get straight. That is normal.
I feel your concentration, guys. I feel like it's just <laughs> these stripes, and we're all like, oh boy. Don't forget to refer up here to the screen if you're not sure on where your stripes go because of how the image is traced on. You can start to like, it's just squiggly lines is all you're seeing for a while, so. Remember, when you do all your stripes, go back to your first stripe and put another layer in every one real quick. That way you can have a nice bright red. And then I think we'll take a break from stripes and go back to our mountains. And then we'll go back and do our white stripes. Everything okay, Autumn? Everything okay? What happened? Oh. oh, so you don't have a dip right here. It's a little. Can you take the red one off? Oh, then you would have to take them all off. Yeah. Well, if you want 13 stripes, you're going to have to remove one. <laughs> Did you do the same thing? <laughs> How's it look, Robin? Show the class your work. It's a thick, thick line at the bottom. It's just... Or you can paint white right over that red one. It needs a layer of white, and then you can blend in some blue. If it's already dry, Autumn will have a hard time taking it off completely. Darn it, and you're my most patriotic customer. You're the red, white, and blue girl. Of all people, you should know there's only 13 stripes. Come on. <laughs> I'm teasing. It honestly, I almost get motion sickness with all these stripes. I'm like, woo. I can understand the mistake. In fact, when I saw the tracing, I was like, oh, that looks like an extra stripe. But just that dent of the wave.
Okay, so I've got all my stripes in, so I'm just going to go to the top now and put in another quick layer. You might not feel like yours needs it, and that's okay. I just like that really bright red to pop, so I'm going to go through. And that second layer is really just one brush stroke because you've done all the work already of shaping. So you can just, now you can just do one stroke right over there. And don't worry about like all the clean edges. We can go back with our detail brush and square things off if we need to at the end. So right now we're just working on getting the main layer in. It's harder than you think to get this flag right. How are we doing, guys? You guys, stretch your back out a little bit. <laughs> I agree with that. Once you're finished, give your brush a good wash so it's ready for our white stripes when we go to them. But we're going to take a stripe break here, and we'll work on our mountains in just a second. Okay, so get your stripes done, wash your brush, and then we'll put in our mountains. I feel motion sickness from those stripes. <laughs> So are you guys all here for the first time? You've been, and you brought friends. We're that cool. You should come back. <laughs> oh, these look awesome, you guys. How are we doing, girls? What's up? Do you need some help? Did you do the stripe thing too? Yes. Oh, my goodness. We're just having stripe problems. Autumn, can you come help her? You're doing the right thing, honey, to paint the white in. So that's good. I almost feel like that, now is that right? Your red stripe should start right here, yeah. So this is where the line should be. Yeah, okay. Yeah, maybe get her a piece of chalk. So yeah, it's a good idea to just fill it in white. You can even use the blow dryer when you're done and dry it and then do another layer of white, okay? Are you cold right here, honey? Are you okay? Okay. These look so good. Even the ones with extra stripes. I love it. We got 14 stripes down the center. Nobody will know. <laughs> What's up? 
You have gone over it twice? Okay, you just need another coat. Yeah. Sometimes if your paint super thin or you're not putting a ton of paint on your brush, it might take more. Yeah. You can just keep moving on to the other steps and then just do it before you leave too. All right. Let's move on to our mountains. If you're still on stripes, it's okay. Looks good, honey. We're going to work on mountains. Do you want to see if she can get this off? Yeah. Autumn, you want to try? All right. Okay, we're going to go back to our mountains. Okay. So go back to your big brush. All right. And go back to your mountain color, that blue mixture you made. And I love to paint mountains because they come together really cool. I'm going to put another layer up in the blue of my flag real quick. If you need it, put it in there now. If not, don't worry about it. It really depends on how dark your blue is. If you ended up with a lighter blue, you don't need multiple layers. If your blue is pretty dark, you'll need more layers. Okay, I'm going to fill in my mountains again, just real quickly. Again, the second layer is always easier because you've got your main shapes in. So it usually goes on pretty quick. And really just focusing on, I mean, I'm going to paint all the way down to the bottom of my canvas, but obviously that's going to have grass on it. So if you have some streaks down there, that's fine. Don't wash your brush when you're done. We're going to shape in our mountain tops, add some light to it, and turn this like blob of blue into mountains, okay? Just want to make sure everybody's mostly with me so you can see these steps. Okay, so I've got my mountains are now wet with my second layer. I have blue on my brush. Um, I'm going to dip my corner in white paint. Okay, so the corner of my brush in white paint. So here's how my brush is loaded. Okay, now I'm going to come over to my mountains and on the left side, I'm going to stroke down. Okay, and I'll brush down a little bit like this on the left side. Okay. I might even shape in another mountain. See how I did that? Just be like, oh, I'm going to do. That's what those little squiggly lines on your mountains were before. And look, now you have mountains. Okay, so corner your brush in white paint. I've got one right here, too, so I'm going to shape one in. I don't know how yours ended. I ended with another mountain right there. So I just kind of do the left side, blend in. See how I just kind of brush in some more light? I love, love how mountains work. Okay. So every once in a while, I choose a mountain to kind of extend down into another like that. But you don't have to do that with every single one, okay? It can just be ones you choose. Remember, you're going to have grass down here, okay? So keep that in mind. It's going to cover some of that up.
So again, focus on the left side. And then you can brush some of that down a little bit more. That way you still have your shadow. So your dark blue is acting as the shadows and this white is that sun hitting the top of the mountains. Or you can, um, you know, in Utah, you can say it's still snow. But I'm going to actually, we'll add little peaks of yellow to this before we're done with class tonight to kind of showcase that it's the sun that's hitting it. And you can go over it multiple times if you feel like you lost some of the white or it's not bright enough for you. You can go over it again. And then just kind of step back and admire your work. Mountains are coolest from a distance. When you're up close to them, you, you're kind of like, oh, I just painted stripes down the side of my canvas. But step back and you see the whole thing come together. One tip, though, is make sure you're using all your bristles. So even though you're just putting paint on one corner, flatten all of your bristles as you go down. That's how you get that blend and not just this sharp line. So use all your bristles, okay? All right. If you are done with your mountains, wash your brush. And now we're going to put the white stripes in our flag, okay? So go back to that little brush. Put your white stripes in as needed. If you've got space that has other colors on it, maybe you've got a red stripe where a red stripe's going to be, you'll need more layers, obviously. But if not, you should be able to just get one layer in here just to kind of clean it up. And you should be good to go. Obviously, if you have some of your sky, you'll want to clean that up too.
I'm always amazed that this song is still going. Am I the only one that feels that way? <laughs> I'm like, wait, is it the same song? Uh, I mean, classic, but at some point, man. Again, if you're just finishing your mountains, we're putting white stripes in our flag now, okay? This is a great opportunity to clean up your stripes if you feel the need to. Believe it or not, your white is your most pigmented color and it cleans up really well. You would think that it was your kind of your weakest, but it's not. And switch over to your detail brush if you need to, to clean up some of your areas. Especially your edges where that brush, you kind of can't help but your brush to kind of fray off on the edge as it gets to the corners of your flag. So you can definitely go through with your detail brush after and kind of just clean up those edges. So after I go through with my white, I'm going to get my detail brush in some red and I'm just going to clean, square off anything that needs to be squared off here. Because we're not outlining the flag or anything like that. So this is your opportunity to kind of just give it a nice crisp finish. And you can do the same with your white, just kind of crisp it up a little bit. <laughs> I know, you're the one that said you were grateful I was keeping it two hours. You still want me to keep it at two? <laughs> Slow down. Time flies when you're having fun, man, right? Or when you're stressed out, time flies. We're supposed to be having fun, but I feel like this flag is causing, I mean, I think I'm getting a headache too, just looking at these stripes. It'll be worth it. We're gonna have an incredible painting. Again, I got my detail brush out and I'm just cleaning up the edges of my flag where those stripes end just so I have nice clean finish. We'll put a little shadow in there but it's not going to give you much crisp cleanness so if you want that you need to do it now with your white and your red and your detail brush kind of get in there.
Okay. I'm going to walk around the room and see where we're at here. It's very patriotic in here. I'm loving it. Robin, what are you doing? He he has to get up at three o'clock. Don't forget. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> look at the look at the way. Did you see the way he just looked at you? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I did another layer, mostly to wet my surface. So it's okay if you thin it out and it's just a thin layer, because then you want that wet surface when you do your mountains. And you're doing. No, you're doing good. You want to just stick on the left side of your mountain. Yep. Because then this is your shadow. Okay. So, and then I'd like to take my brush and I'll go down like you did and then I'll brush a little bit. Okay. And lighten it. But you don't want to lose your shadow. Okay. So you can blend a little bit, but don't lose your shadow. Are you good on blue or do you need more? Okay. You need some more? Okay, I'll, I'll bring it this way. <laughs> I know, it is kind of... I know. I was getting motion sickness up there, to be honest. <laughs> it was starting to affect me a little bit. Okay, so if your flag is cleaned up, wash all, make sure all your brushes are clean. We've been using the flat and we've used the little red squared off one and our detail one. So just kind of check all your brushes, make sure we're all clean and ready for our next step. Oh, that was good. You just kind of took that off the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's a good idea. Okay. I think most of us need some help. Waiting for what? The next step? You need paper towels. Oh. Oh, she's right there. Okay. No, you're good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If your flag is needing more time and more layers to fix things or just you're trying to cover up the pencil mark, you can do a layer and then move on with the class and then go back to the flag um, when class is over too so that you don't miss how to do certain steps. Okay, so just do your flag little bits at a time. Don't feel like you have to finish it right now just because the rest of us are moving on. You can um, finish it at the end of class too. We're going to do our flag pull next. I just want to point out that your flag isn't connected. Okay, it's kind of got, since it's blowing in the wind, it's blowing away from your pole. So it's connected at the top and the bottom. So you have this big space here. Okay, make your pole. And then if you need to pull your flag, the red part back a little bit to connect it to your pole, but you want that kind of arch right there. Okay, so the line on your canvas, if you can still see it, that's the very outside of this pole, and we're going to thicken it up a little bit and then put a little knob at the top, okay? So you want to make a little bit of gray. We're going to use our, our small brush. Um, and it doesn't take a whole lot of black to make some gray. I'm just going to move some over. 
You can have a super dark charcoal. You can have a really light gray. It's your flagpole. So I'm using, again, I'm using my detail brush. And I'm going to take the time to add water to that paint and loosen it up because it has sat here now for over an hour. It's going to start thickening and seizing up. So take the time to loosen it. Remember melted ice cream so you get a nice brush stroke on your canvas. Okay. And we're going to take the flagpole all the way through our mountains. And we're doing this before our grass because our flagpole is behind our grass. Okay. So I'm just going to follow this line as best as I can. Okay. all the way down okay once you get that in you can go and you can kind of clean it up a little bit as you can see mine's kind of waving with my flag a bit but once you get that main stroke in you can go back and clean it up And again, we can always go back, take some red paint, and connect the tip of the flag to the pole. We want to create that little arch, though, okay? So that line that's on there is the very outer edge of this okay so if you yeah so if you keep your brush inside that line and sort of press your bristles down mm -hmm, yeah it should your flag should be traced in in such a way that there's a little arch it won't be the end of the world if your arch doesn't show up but you can try to maintain it to showcase that it's waving in the wind here And then you can kind of circle in that fun knob at the top. And then you can, again, you can go take some red and some blue and have that connection to the flag there. Kind of bring it in if it didn't quite make it to your flag. And same with the blue. I'll just kind of arch that blue a little bit more so you can see that little pole separation there. And don't be too hard on yourself with your straight line pole. It's really hard to do. This is when I would suggest move your canvas if you need to, to get that straight line. Because it's really tricky.
All right, you guys, we're on the home stretch. While my gray is still wet, I'm gonna wash my brush off, just put some white on my brush, and I'm gonna add a highlight up here in my little knot. I don't know why I'm calling it a knot, bulb. That circle on top there. Okay, so then you can kind of see that circle. And then I'll take some of that white on my brush and blend it down my flagpole just to highlight my flagpole, okay? It's going to be super subtle, but it is a touch that is helpful, especially if you ended up with a really fat flagpole. This will skinny it up a little bit with a highlight. And as a reminder, we're all going to have a different flagpole, okay? Some of us are just going to have little tiny ones. Some of us are going to have big ones. It's okay. Thank goodness we're all different. The world would be boring if we weren't. So, love it. Love the differences. Nice job, dude. What do you mean? Have you been to a class before? Is this your first time? Well, then I think this looks awesome. You're what? You're more of a gymnast. Oh, well, yeah, this is different than gymnastics. Everyone's a painter. I Everyone's an artist, dude. I'm scooting you in. Ready? Chair's coming in. Just so I can get around you, okay? I think it looks awesome. Okay. We're almost ready for grass, stars, birds, and then and then we're done. You're ready for birds? Okay, we're gonna do our grass first, just so we don't brush over a bird. Okay, you ready for birds too? Hi. Ooh, this looks awesome, dude. Nice job. This is your first time, huh? I love it. Good job. All right. Ready or not? We're doing grass. If you've been to classes before, you either love it or hate it, and we're putting it in. <laughs> Grass and clouds, man. It's our favorite thing. Honestly, if you like this painting without grass, make that decision. I'm okay with that. You have to live with your painting. You look at it every day, okay? So if you don't want to do grass, don't do grass. You can do um, trees, you can do a sidewalk. I don't really care, okay? It's your painting. I am going to do grass because um, I love painting grass. Once you get it, it is a lot of fun. It just takes a few tries. I am going to get a piece of paper because I'm not prepared. Because I want to show you guys before we go on to our canvas. Just some brush strokes, okay? Okay, we're gonna use this brush. It's a round brush, but it's not your little detail brush, okay? Um, and I'm gonna paint some grass in um, some red on this piece of paper so you can see it, just because I have red right here. All right, so this is how we want to paint grass. You can't even see what I'm doing. Here we go. This is typically how we want to paint grass. Or this. This is what we do when we're little, right? Like that. Okay, grass actually grows in curves. Okay? So what you want to do is you want to start at the base of your blade. And you want to brush in curves to the left, to the right, straighten it up and go like that. Okay, so 
start at the base, pressure, pull away from your canvas. Your blade gets skinny as it goes up, okay? Bend one way, straighten it up, bend the other way, okay? And then we'll add layers so that you can see the separation of your blades. Pressure at the bottom. Bend in different directions, okay? This isn't a manicured golf course, okay? Where we're just like that, okay? We want to swirl them. You can see here bent blades. Some are straight, some are leaning, okay? That's how we want to put them in. All right, so we're going to start with a dark green. Let's get that brush ready. We're going to mix the dark green on your plate with some yellow, okay? Again, this has been sitting on your plate for a while. Use your water. I want to start with a dark green. I'm going to add a touch of white to it, just a touch though, okay, for coverage. Pull in some yellow. This is my shadowed grass. This is my dark layer, but you can see we come in with some lighter layers. So we're making our shadowed grass, the one in the very back, okay. So here's my shadowed grass color. It might, to you, look like just the same green on your plate, but I mixed yellow and a little bit of white with it. Okay, so I got it a little limey color because this color, if you add white, it's, it's turquoise. Okay, so that's why we're sticking with more yellows because if we just added white to it to lighten it, we would get turquoise. Okay, now notice all my blades, they're ending in different heights. They're not all the same. Some pull up. Look, this one, this blade almost goes to the top of that mountain. Okay, because this is in the foreground. Right? Those mountains are way in the back, okay? So have fun with your blades. Start at the bottom. Here we go. Bending, pulling a sum up, okay? Mm-hmm. Right over your flagpole. I'll bend to the left, I'll straighten, I'll bend to the right, okay? Are we already having problems? <laughs> Pressure at the bottom of your blade, pull away as you come to the top, okay? So I'm bending, I'll straighten, then I'll bend again. I know, you guys hate grass, I'm sorry. You want to make sure the base here is nice and dark. So if you have to go back with your um, brush and darken it, do that. It's going to kind of fight with that dark blue mountain, okay? As it dries, it's just going to look like, almost like you've got black grass. But again, those are your shadowed blades. Those are way back, okay? If you step back and you think, okay, all my blades are exactly the same height, then go back and pull some taller. Okay. Make sure you have some bend to it, but you're not making a cactus. Okay. You don't want all of your grass coming out of the one root. Even though you're bending, you want to spread it. Okay. So that's a lot of times people when they're painting grass and I say bend, they end up getting a cactus, okay? Cactus plant, and that's not what we want. We just want a little bit of bend, okay? 
and then come back. Notice I come back and I'm just going to pull from the bottom of my canvas like this. Make sure everything is dark at the bottom. Okay? Don't want any of the blue coming through on the bottom. All that's covered up. Okay? Start from the root. Don't try and start from the tip of your blade. Start from the root. Pressure on your root and then pull away from your canvas. Okay? And also don't put a ton of thought into it, okay? If you do, you're going to get that well-manicured lawn. Just base, sorry, did I bump you guys? Base and pull up, okay? And this is the first layer. It's going to kind of look like a blob there at the bottom. But we're going to add our different shades in a minute, okay? So keep that in mind. I was just trying to keep the glare off the screen for a little bit. Don't worry about it making sense right now. It'll start to make sense when you do your next layer, okay? Right now it's just going to look not right, okay? Okay, 60%, wash your brush. We're going to give that a minute. We're going to go put in the shadow on our flag creases. Okay, if your flag needs more layers, it's not done yet. Watch what I do, and then do it when your flag's ready for it. Okay? So make sure your big flat brush is clean, and then we're going to get it in um, clean water. Okay? So clean flat brush, clean water. I'm going to drag my fingers down it to wring some of it out, but I want it damp, okay? Now I'm going to put the tiniest bit of black on one edge, okay? I mean, that's, that's the amount of black I have on it, okay? Very little bit on one edge, okay? You can even brush it on your plate a little bit to make sure it's just that little bit. See right here, this is your shadow, okay? You're going to come up to the first crease of our flag and go down with that, okay? Now you can't see that, so I'm going to do it a little bit darker. Yep, the black edge of your brush. Let me get the original down so I can bring it closer to the camera. Do you see that black line right there? So I'm working within that crease, okay? So I have a damp brush with a little bit of black. Start with a tiny bit of black. You can add more black if you can't see it. You can't take it away. Once it's on there, it's on there. And then follow that crease right there, okay? That damp brush will help get that little bit of fade. So I'm right, I'm like this, okay? You want all your bristles, bristles, but I can't talk. Flatten them so that that black fades into it. That water pushes it into your canvas, okay? If you need some more water, get some more water. We're going to do it again. This time we're going to do it the opposite 
side of the crease right here. Okay. So I'm following this. We're shadowing the part of the flag that is inside of that wave. So this is the back, right? This wave is in the back. We're pushing it behind the other sections of our flag. And we're going to pull this one all the way down. Okay, I'm going to carefully put a little shadow. Let's see, let me get more black on there. This little part right here. And it twists around right there. Might have to clean up some of the water with your finger. Depending on how wet your brush is. I'm going to add just a little bit on the edges of my flag, too, just to kind of help, I don't know, kind of dirty it up a little bit so it's not too crisp. So I'll go down the edges here. The reason your brush is wet is so that it has that nice, fade into the white. So you're not just getting this harsh line, okay? So you want to play off of that. If your brush is too dry, get it wet. And you can put some in your blue too. It won't come up super strong but you can kind of just add a little bit in your blue. So you can see how adding that little bit of shadow in our flag helps that wave come to life a little bit. And again, if you're still adding layers to your flag, we can help you get this concept down again if you need it, okay? I did it up on this edge and a little bit right here. It's really hard to see because of how dark the blue is. Mm, see, it's just barely right there. Do you see that? Yeah, just barely. All the subtleties. <laughs> Make sure you're using all your bristles. Even though you're, if we just needed a corner of a brush, we would use our detail brush. We're using all of our bristles so that it fades in because all those bristle, bristles are pushing the paint and that water is helping it push, okay? All right, we're going to our grass next layer. So back to that round brush. We are gonna lighten our green a shade, mostly with yellow, okay? Because again, if I just add white, I am going to end up with turquoise, okay? I do wanna add some white, but I'm not doing a ton of white, okay? I'm adding a lot of yellow, and then I'll add a little touch of white in there, okay? So this is our 
next shade. You don't have to keep your original shade, okay? So just your next shade up, okay? Now we're putting in another layer of grass without hiding all of our shadowed grass, okay? So we're not going necessarily over each um, blade that we painted before. We're just adding another layer. And I know there's a lot of light glares on here right now. Whoa. Sorry. I wonder if this would help. That's not even turning on. All right. Here we go. Again, I'm starting at the base. Okay. Let me make sure you can see that as a different shade. I'm going to go a little bit lighter for the sake of the lights that I'm under here. I'm going to turn this off. Oh, maybe that'll help for a minute. I don't know. All right. Okay, so I'm doing another layer of grass, okay? I'm not covering. You can see. You can see I've got shadows. Still bending my blades from one side to the next, straightening some, okay? This is my next layer. Let's pull this one up close so you can see, okay? Do you see the really yellow blades? That's my final layer. That lighter green right there, this is the layer we're doing. And you can see the dark there. So I'm not covering the dark, okay? I'm just adding another, it's called a value. I'm adding another value here to my blades. That glare's driving me crazy. Sorry, guys. Again, start at the base. Curve a little one way, go straight with some, but make sure you have all those different directions going on, okay? This layer should go on a little quicker because you already have that green in there, okay? Don't hide your shadow, just layering. Whew! Two hour class is a lot. Hang in there, we're almost done. There's a reason our longest class is two hours. We don't go past that. We used to. It's a lot. Looks good, bud. How we doing? Are you going to smile tonight? Is he just always scowling at everybody? Is that what he does? When he paints, he scowls. Yeah, it's his concentration face. Okay. <laughs> You're just so sweet to come paint with Robin. The ornery old man. I married one of those. But, you know, he's also the fun, the fun dad that does all the things. Yep. Okay. What's up, girl? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to just grab you a different plate, okay? What's up? More green. Let me see your plate. Okay. I think they look awesome. All right. Just a second. This is an extra plate we had. You can use what you want. All right. Okay. We're going to put our stars in our flag because we haven't stressed enough yet. So we really need to, we really need to stress. So you can be super OCD, put 50 stars in. Okay. I'm going to use the bottom of my brush. 
to dot them in. And when you dot them in, you can kind of swivel it a little bit, okay? But let's like, yeah, the green brush, your little one. Let's dot all of them in first. Then if you want to flip your brush around and use the bristles and add little corners to it, you can. I'll show you this one up close. You know, they're just, I, the first thing I did was just a dot. And then I turned my brush over and kind of did an X in the middle of it or something. Like, honestly, from a distance, it doesn't need to look like a perfect star. Okay. Heaven help us if they did. You know what? I thought I did 50 when I created this piece, but then my daughter said I was missing some. I'll show you what I did, and then you can you can do what you want to do, okay? All right, so bottom of your brush, dip it in paint. I started doing five down and five across. So I'm going to go one, let's see, two, three. This is the bottom of my green brush. Four, five, okay? And then five up here. Try and work with the wave of your flag. One. Okay, now the thing is, in between each grouping, so we just did these five, right? But in between them is four. See that? So you've got five, four. So we're going to do all of our fives down, and then in between those, we have another one. That's really confusing, huh? So just go down, you know, like this. Whoops, that one's really close to that. What did I miss? One, two, three. Two. Once you have five across, five down, and then you fill those up, you're going to put a dot in between each four dots. So I'm going to do a dot right there, okay? And then, like I said, you can turn your brush around if you want. If you just want the dots, there's nothing wrong with just the dots, okay? But if you want to kind of m add some little star lines in there, you could turn your brush around, you know, and make it appear like there's little stars. Again, this flag is up high, so... You can get away with just so you can kind of see the difference between leaving it just a dot and trying to kind of use your little bristles to kind of shape it into a star.
you choose if you've chosen just to do dots and you're like okay i don't have anything to do right now because i just want to keep my dots um you can start filling in your uh birds if you can see them yeah If you are trying to kind of make it more of a star than a dot, just remember that not to try for this perfect star, okay? Just kind of, I like to kind of go almost like I'm making a little flower in there. Because it really, when you look at this from a distance, you're not going to... critique it like you'd think you would. All right, guys, we're going to fill in our birds with just black paint, okay? You should have two that you can see. I'll show you the original piece. I actually have five birds on the original piece. You don't have to do that, okay? Um, these other ones are were too tiny to put on your surface. But they're also pretty just basic, almost like that V shape, especially this one right here. You know, this one's got a little bit different wing, but it's almost just that V shape. So we put the two big ones in there for you so you can fill those in. And then if you want to follow me with the other birds, you can do that. If not, I mean, just have your two birds. I like everything in odds because that's kind of a rule of art to do thing in odds do things in odd so I would suggest you do at least three but I mean I'm not really in charge of your painting so you do you I would take the time to loosen up your paint black paint with water it is pretty thick now and then yeah we're just gonna fill these in and the birds really help to balance the piece uh, because we have that big flag there. So it's nice to have the birds kind of coming off of this other side here. After birds, we're still going to do our last highlight in our grass, okay? So if you think you're done, you're not, okay? So don't run off on me yet unless you are happy with your piece and you want to sign it. That's okay. As you're doing these birds, remember pressure. If you push really hard on your brush, you're going to get a big, thick line. If you're gentle with the pressure, you'll get a thin line, okay? This one right here, if you're going to do three instead of five, I would do this one because it's literally just that, that V shape that we're used to seeing. 
when we do birds. And then you just kind of put a little head there, just a little circle, and give a little tail. So if you want to do an odd amount of birds, put this other one in and call it good because that's your easiest one of the five to do freehand. I'm going to do another one here. And they get smaller as they come down the page, the canvas. And you could even do the rest of them in little V's if you want. This one's kind of got a swervy line going to it. This last one, this little one in here is also very similar to that. Just kind of like that V shape with a little head and then a little tail. Probably can't even see that one. But it's, it's pretty much just that V too. So if you want to do that little one in the mountain, just kind of make that swervy V and put a tail and a head on it. Okay, you guys, final step. And then we're signing. And you did it. You painted a pretty, I would say, challenging piece. This had a lot of, lot of detail in it. I'm going to hold this up for just a minute in case anybody wants to copy these birds without the glare of the lights. This is what they look like. Birds are so fun because even during the day, they're just a silhouette in the sky. Y'all done, girly? Awesome. Thanks for painting with me. Did you sign it? Good job. Always want to sign our work, but it means we're proud of what we did. Okay, are we good? Can I move this? Are you still looking? I'll leave it up here for another minute. Thank you. She did awesome. Bye, honey. If you're done with birds, make sure that detail brush is washed, okay? Don't leave it sitting in your water. It'll actually bend the bristles, and then it'll have a bad hair day. So we want to keep our detail brush hairs together so we can do these details. Okay, so our last layer of grass is going to be our super limey layer. So we're going to add the rest of our yellow to our green make it really yellowy you can see here on the screen the final layer is that bright yellow <clears throat> so you can mix that color up if you want to I'm going to move this painting out of the way. I think you can see the birds now that they're dry on my piece. Sometimes they just have to dry and then the glare goes away. Okay, so final layer of grass. I'm really going to focus in on my yellow, okay? I might even pull yellow and green into a new center spot so that I can really keep it lime color and not mix all of it with my green and lose that bright, bright green shade, okay? Maybe add a touch of white because again, you need that fighting um, 
all the dark colors, okay? And then same thing as before, we don't want to cover up all the work we did before on our canvas, all the other sh shades. So we're not covering up our shadows. Okay. This is muscle memory, guys. This happens when you paint grass over and over again. You can just kind of start to get that motion of bending blades. I say that so you're not too hard on yourself because sometimes when I'm up here, people are like, oh yeah, it's not that easy. It just comes after a lot of practice. Okay. Get that final and that extra line color. We don't want to, we don't want to cover everything. This is just, just a few strokes across the bottom. Okay. And it just makes that grass pop and I love it so much. But then you have those other layers in there, those shadows in there too. Looks awesome, girl. Now, I know I told you that was our last step before signing, but I forgot that I liked to put just a touch of yellow on my mountaintops. I don't, you can barely see it. But if you want to complement the sky onto the tops, do it the same way we did the shadow in our flag. Just a clean, damp brush with a little bit of yellow on the corner. And then you can just go over the top of your mountains. See, clean brush, a little bit of yellow, and you can just kind of barely hit the top of those mountains where it's most white so it doesn't look too green. And that just kind of complements the yellow in the sky a little bit. But that's a step I'll leave up to you. I know a lot of you are feeling it and ready to call it. Just totally okay, but you can kiss the top of those with some yellow. And then, my friends, you can sign your name. And I encourage you to do that. Even if you don't love your painting, sign your name. Leave your mark on it. Any color you want, use your detail brush. Sign your name somewhere. And be proud of your work because this was tricky to my little artist in the room. Wait for mom or dad, okay? Those of you who are finished and ready to go, thank you for painting with me. I'm happy to help you with pictures at the wall if you want a group picture. If you're still working on your painting, no pressure to rush through it. Finish it so you're proud of it, okay? And holler out if you miss steps that you need me to go over again. I'm happy to go over those steps, okay? You guys were awesome. Thank you. You're going to hide it. Why? You should display it proudly. It's your first painting ever. I love it. All right.